Democrats accused of being outright delusional after the latest boast from President Biden. Despite sinking polls in a tumultuous year of chaos ranging from Afghanistan to the southern border and now problems with the economy, President Biden claims his party is poised to win big in 2022 and even telling Republicans they need to watch out. Now we look at 2022. I want to tell my Republican friends, get ready, pal. You're going to in for a problem. We have to keep making the case. And if we do, I believe we're going to win. Let me say this again for the president. We're going to win in 2022. As Democrats, we know what we're for. While Republicans don't seem to be for anything. Name me something they are for. They're against everything. I don't know a single solitary world leader who wouldn't trade the problems the president of the United States has for their problems. I don't know a single one. And Not one. And Speaker Nancy Pelosi is gushing over the job President Biden has been doing. They're blocking every effort to provide. It is an honor and, of course, a pleasure to be here at this time of challenge and with the coronavirus, financial insecurity for families, national disasters, and more. Our country could not be more, could not be better served than with this most experienced, capable hands than yours, President Biden. He's just perfect. The timing couldn't be better. And Madam Vice President, we're inspired by your work for the people as you continue to be an invaluable partner to President Biden. So while the president and Speaker Pelosi are predicting big things, squad member Cori Bush is preemptively blaming Biden and moderate Democrats for potential losses. But that's super interesting. We're going to talk about all of this. Let me start with you, Jesse. They're going to say this no matter what. Right. Because they have to. Right. Uh, but do you get the sense that they believe it? No, nope. uh, when the donors are there, you have to say we're going to yeah. win. <laughs> Especially if you have all these Democrats, what are you going to say? You know what? I'm unpopular. There's high crime, high yeah. COVID cases. You guys are on your own this year. I'm uh, old. Pass the eggnog. Right. Like, that's yeah. not going to fly. Deep on the police bellied up. Right. It's like, it's like a pep rally. Like, even if, like, the team is down four touchdowns in the fourth quarter, like, there's still going to be pom-poms. You got you to root for the team, and I understand that. But you can't blame Republicans. It's cinema, it's mansion, it's the squad, you know, it's the blue dogs. They're kind of slowing down his agenda. Why would the Republican Party strap their lassos to this train wreck? Look at this guy. He's unpopular. His policies are making everything worse. If he was popular and he was doing good things, you'd probably have maybe 10 to 15 Senate Democrats joining that agenda, but you're not going to see that, and that's clear. Nancy Pelosi, <laughs> Mr. Perfect. I am old enough to remember when a couple Republicans were a little uh, praiseworthy of Donald Trump <laughs> at a cabinet meeting, and it was like the media frame that is a bunch of suck ups to a dictator. Remember that whole thing? Mr. Perfect, of all people. Now, I mean, that's you. I mean, right. I mean, right. we don't use that word lightly, but like only in politics. Do, do politicians just, like, go around and just kiss each other's butts? Like, a, would we do that at this table? You are perfect, right. Ryan kill me. Sarcastically. It is an honor. Yeah, yeah. Only sarcastically. We, we are the king of sarcasm right. when it comes to compliments. I would, I'm sorry, do you want to? Go ahead, yeah, Oh, sure. Is, I forgot how it You went. may. I don't want to get it in the post-game uh, meeting. Which You've been up a long time. Hours. Thank you. Uh, a couple of things. This is, if they called Donald Trump perfect, it, we would have laughed out, I mean, at this table because no one's perfect. Except you. Uh, but, but I'm going to just answer her question, what are the Republicans for? And I'm, I'm not in charge of their agenda, but just by listening to the interviews and, and talking to some of them, they like to drill. Uh, they would like to get uh, the, the, the energy cost down so they can do that by getting LNG. They would have stopped the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. They would have actually went out of their way to arm the Ukrainians and gave them, help them give them a strategy and maybe put some advisors on the ground to let the Russians know what's going to happen. Also, they were going to investigate China and the origin of the COVID virus, and they were going to finish the wall. After all, we have the receipts. It was paid for. That's what they'd be doing. So it's not, a, it's not what are they for. They're for these things. That's just off the top of my head. Well, that was good for off the yeah, top that, of your head. Can that I very pose good. a question, though? So one of the things is that they've started to do is that the Build Back Better bill has been languishing for a while. It's not going to pass before Christmas. And now you have many Democrats who are saying, you know what, we should really work on the voting rights piece of our agenda. Yeah. So they're shelving Build Back Better already. So to me, that means, like, the longer this sits out there, the longer he might look like a lame duck president before he even gets to his first State of the Union address. Well, he, he is like a lame duck president because even the New York Times is writing an article about who should run for president, telling him not to run for president. Cori Bush, the uh, one of the squad members or one of the radical uh, congresswomen is saying, we're losing in 2022 because of you, Joe Biden. Yeah. And what we've got are all of these people who 
already know that, that Joe Biden can't be the leader. He can't carry the Democrats. He kept talking about, I kept saying to myself, what is he saying? Why is he saying he's going to win? What he was saying was, we stand with the people. We've made historic progress. What does that We're going to make sure. That's exactly my point. Right. He says things that mean nothing. And, yeah, Republicans are for nothing. Oh, well, we're for law and order to begin with. We're for the wall. We're for education. We're for people making a responsible salary. I mean, this guy is for all for inflation. And the bottom line is, yeah, I've been in politics. I ran five times. You really try to, you know, puff things up a little. But those people <laughs> that he was talking to, even they don't believe it. Yeah. And Nancy Pelosi coming out and saying that she is inspired by Kamala Harris <laughs> His work. That's a quote. <laughs> what work? Well, she I think does she have a microscope, in, a Hubble I think telescope she's still to find in the work? Vietnam. I mean, right. I don't know. Did she come back from Vietnam? I'm not sure. Kamala uh, Harris. I mean, it's all it's all nonsense. It's all smoke and mirrors, and they're losing. And the, or rather, the, the, the generic ballot, it. the congressional ballot, has Republicans at a historic high. Like, they've not ever seen numbers like this. So, if you are a Republican, you should run in Vermont. This year, you, you never know. Republicans could win everywhere. But to me, I didn't take any of that rhetoric seriously. To me, it was all, you know, kind of flamboyant irony. Uh, oh, really? You know, we're taking we're it so unpopular. Seriously. Let's say we're popular. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Inside joke. And, the, and then go <laughs> on. But I, I will. I don't know the mechanisms of the economy. I don't pretend to. I'm not a businessman, uh, you know, but I am an investor. And the stock market was up almost 400 points today. Uh, and it's, uh, of the you Fed. know, it's near because historic highs because of the Fed. Right. So if the Fed bails out the Democrats, maybe our our presumption that they're going to be routed uh, in November will will be tested. Uh, as things stand, I, I don't understand how you could possibly be optimistic holding the hand that the Democrats are holding. Look what just happened. We're going to talk later in the program about the mayor of San Francisco completely uh, yeah. walking away from her policies from a year ago. And as if it never happened, I believe the Democrats will do that increasingly, that they'll they'll right. they'll just stop. Cory Bush. This isn't working. Let's move on. Cory Bush still, still says to fund the police. And believe me, every time she has a microphone, she says the same thing, which Joe Biden passes out every time she says. Well, I was but they're say also that. saying things, Jesse, like if you don't cancel student loan debt, you will not get the Democrats to come out to vote. So the, the, the progressives are already saying you're not going to fire up the base. Young people don't vote in midterms anyway, Dana. Am I right about that? You I'm should. right about that. So I don't think they're going to turn out for Joe Biden. I don't <laughs> think that's going to, like, drive them to the polls. And the, what? So they have to pay what they were paying a year ago. Big okay. deal. Okay, just to chime in, there are 35-year-olds who will be outraged if all of a sudden the loan that they just finished paying off yeah. was paid <laughs> off by do all these 23-year-olds get their loans paid off. There's a lot of people who take great pride in paying off their debt. Yeah. And yeah. I just think you break that agreement. I, the one thing I'd like to add, out of everybody that could replace Joe Biden, the one guy that I think could, Gavin Newsom. I predicted that. That was my prediction from okay. the last show. I don't agree show. with you. Uh, Joe Manchin. No, yeah, stop. But, but you can't Joe get the Manchin? progressive Democrats. No. But you know what? Joe Manchin has more. We like him. I'm going to give you my we answer. We like him, but we'll have our own candidate, a yeah. Republican candidate. He can't get enough from the right or the left to win. So you I'm going to give you my answer tonight. <laughs> yeah, I do. Tucker. In the A block, so Who do you think? Can watch. Oh. I'm gonna tell you, I, I, that's, that's the deep tease. I'll be on Tucker. I'll be deep. talking oh, about this very. That is so issue deep. It's two shows away. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.